Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again, Pete G0 PLM here, and we're taking a look at another Begali key. Now this one is ideal for the portable operator or for traveling. We have had a look at the Traveller before, but this is an ideal key if you are really limited with space and weight. This week, we're going to be looking at the Begali Adventure. Once again, a very big thank you to my good friend Dave, G4NRT, for the loan of these two keys. And uh, what he sent me here is the two uh, adventure keys. On the left, you see the adventure mono, and on the right, the adventure iambic paddle. Um, so, I'll move one out of the way, and uh, we'll have a look at the iambic paddle, because they are virtually the same. So this is Begali's adventure. As you can see, it's absolutely tiny, um, a fantastically machined key, and ideal for the portable operator that uh, wants something that's um, small. Perhaps you have a small rig like the uh, uh, Elecraft KX3 or the KX2. These are a perfect addition to those small portable QRP rigs, if you like or even the FT817, FT818. I won't bother going through any measurements, um, firstly because I can't find my ruler, <laughs> but um, as you can see, it is an absolutely tiny key um, and perfect for, uh, for your portable operations. Um, the adjustment wise, this cam on the top with the flat headed uh, slot in it is for your contact adjustment. And uh, on the bottom, this knurled adjustment knob here is your uh, tension adjustment. Uh, and that's it, that's all you have really. Um, now, you're thinking, how, how, when you, how am I gonna work this? How is it gonna work? Do I hold on to it? Well, Begali make um, a couple of options. They, um, they have this, which is the magnetic base, and they have this, which is a bracket this one is particularly suited to the Elecraft KX3, and I'll show you that in a minute, but we'll, we'll go to this one. This is the, um, as it says on the side, Begali Adventure Magnetic Base, and this is the same base that you, you would use on either of the Adventure keys. And what it does is um, it provides you with a, a sturdy base for use um, on a metal surface. So for instance, if you were not going to use this bracket, which goes onto the front of the KX3, you could use this base plate and it would use magnets uh, on the bottom and it grips with this rubber O-ring, if you like, around the edge and it provides a very sturdy base. And the way that the key fits onto it is you have a hole here with this sort of star pattern around it. Um, and what you would do is that goes onto here. And I'll try and fit it. Um, looking for my screwdriver. <coughs> that screws into there. And once it's done up, very sturdy very sturdy indeed. You could have this off at, at an angle, depending on the type of radio you have and um, whether you need to adjust it at all. So this provides you with a good solid base and um, perfect for being out in the field. Okay, so what I have here is an old, um, an old two meter set that no longer works very well. It doesn't transmit. Um, and I'll just use it for receiving the space station here in the shack. Um, and uh, what we can do is just to show you is to um, pop that on there. Very strong magnets indeed, neodymium magnets, and um, they work really, really well at, um, as you can see, I'm working it there and it's, it's uh, very, very stable indeed. The other mounting option, 
I just push that to the back, is, um, is this, which is specifically intended for the KX3. And uh, this bolts onto the front panel, or just under the front panel, and then the, um, the key would fit onto here, the same as it does the magnetic base. And that gives you a platform for um, your key that's uh, directly connected to the, uh, the radio, the KX3. So what I'll do is um, I'm not going to be able to uh, take the key over to the other position because of the um, very short wire that it's got. Oh, one thing I will note is that um, if you do buy one of these or have one of these, be very careful. Um, Dave mentioned this and wanted me to mention it in, in the video is this point here where the cable exits the case is, um, is prone to um, mobile phone charging cable syndrome, I'll call it, where the sleeve comes out. Um, and you can just see it starting to happen on, on this one. Um, you can just see the cable, the sheath, or the screening on the cable starting to poke out there. So um, just be very careful if you do um, have one of these, just be very careful that you don't um, pull the cable or put it under, under any undue stress, because it could pop out. And um, I can't imagine they would be that easy to repair if you did pull the cable completely out. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll plug it into the Tentec. I've got a socket on the front, primed and ready. Um, and you uh, won't be able to see the radio, but um, I'll turn the volume up and we'll see if we can't um, have some sort of contact on the, uh, on the adventure. And um, yeah, this will be my first time of, of actually using one of these. So if I do make any mistakes, I do apologize. I'm only human, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So I've got the adventure connected to the front panel of the Tentac Orion. I'm on 40 meters, just below the fist frequency. I'm on 7.027.75. And um, we'll give it a go and see if we can't make any contacts. And I apologize for my squeaking chair. So no joy there. What I'll do is I'll take it down uh, just below. I'll go to 7.024 decimal five. I'll um, increase the speed a little bit. see if we can have a go a little bit faster but um, 7.0245 right let's have a go try a little bit faster again I just want to see how how the key performs at higher speeds so I've got my radio set to 32 words a minute now Well, what absolutely cracking little keys these um, adventures 
are very, very um, precisely made. Fantastic, fantastic engineering. Um, and I did forget to mention, but you can see the difference between the mono and the iambic in the fact that the, um, the mono, the paddles are joined in the middle, whereas the iambic have got two arms. So that's the only difference. Um, and of course you can key in a mono style with the iambic paddle or switch between the two, whichever or whatever floats your boat as they say. And uh, with the addition of the magnetic base, it makes it a very capable uh, key and certainly one that I would consider if I ever went down the portable route. Um, and of course, don't forget the brackets as well. You can get brackets for um, the KX3, the KX2. Um, so um, that makes them very, very good uh, and an ideal addition. I mean, if you're spending a lot of money on uh, something like an Elecraft KX3 or a KX2, then you want a decent key to go with it if you're a keen CW op like um, I know you are if you're watching this video. So again, thanks to Dave, G4NRT, for loaning me the keys. Next week uh, will be my last one for a little while because I'll run out of keys again. Uh, and it'll be the Sculpture Mono. So um, if you have a Sculpture Iambic paddle, this is the Mono version, uh, single paddle. So uh, join me next week. Um, stay safe and uh, don't forget to check the websites www.g0pnm.uk and Bagali's website www.i2rtf.com and before I do go I will tell you the pricing I nearly forgot that bear with me the cost of the Find them now on the website. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the Adventure um, dual lever key, the iambic panel is 248 euros. The mono is 258 euros. Um, and let me just see if the price of the base is uh, is on their web page as well. Okay, so looking at the website, the current price of the iambic panel, twin paddle is uh, 248 euros. Um, call sign engraving a standard 22 euros. And they do these brackets that I showed you um, for the Elecraft KX2, the KX1, and the KX3, and also the FT817. Uh, I think the 817 fits on the side of the radio. Um, or the base, the magnetic base, or the desktop base, um, it's 37 euros. All of those are, are subject to a charge, um, a VAT charge of 22%. And of course, then you've got delivery on top of that. Anyway, take care. See you next week. Stay safe and uh, have fun with your CW. Take care. Bye-bye.